What's up guys, back here with another video. And uh, what is next for the UFC 269 fighters uh, after the amazing car they had in Vegas? Um, good way to end the year on a high note. Besides, you know, when it comes to pay-per-view wise, obviously, we have Derek Lewis versus Chris Dawkins this weekend. Uh, that should be an amazing fight. But yeah, man, before I get started, make sure to please hit the subscribe button, ring that bell to get all notifications. And uh, let's get right into it. So, like I said, what's next uh, for the UFC main card fighters? And um, so, yeah, let's go from the bottom of the main card to the top. So, first up, we have Rulion Paiva versus Sean O'Malley. Um, Sean O'Malley is probably the most well-respected fighter right now. Uh, besides what I think of, sometimes he just can't take a loss, especially the, the loss to Chito Vera. But nonetheless, he got the victory done over Rulion Paiva. Paiva uh, was a really good jiu-jitsu guy. And, you know, he tried his best to get the fight to the ground, but he didn't. Um, O'Malley, again, his popularity in the UFC is just phenomenal uh, to see. Um, after knocking uh, Paiva out in the first round, uh, I would like to see him fight um, somebody within the top 15 at least. You know, or f fuck it, just throw him in there with the top 10 as well. Um, I think that is granted for him. You know, even though he did lose to Chito, you know, but um, I think now with a win over Paiva, I think uh, it would be great to see him fight somebody within the top 15 to, or even closer to the top 10. Um, yeah, man. That's what I think of Sean O'Malley. Um, the next fight was Kai Cutter France versus... Um, Cody Gargrant, Cody Gargrant dropping down in weight, uh, hopefully to start a new resurgence, uh, for him and his career. You know, he's been going up and down lately when it comes to in the banner weight division, but now he dropped weight again to, um, face Kai Carter France. Kai Carter France at flyweight, man, that dude is just a straight savage. Um, his heart, man, um, his determination when he fights, man, and, just the way he fights, I knew that it was going to be a really good fight. But um, for Cody Gargrant, the problem, the issue is that right now that he has is just that I think that, you know, his chin has already been broken up a little bit, well, a lot by uh, after the TJ Dillashaw fight. You know, that's what, like his third knockout, I guess, if I'm not mistaken, for Cody Gargrant. I mean, he got the knockout win over Rafael Sonsal, but... His chin is not the same, and it hasn't been the same since the T.J. Dillashaw uh, fight. Uh, for Kai Carter Friends, it's nothing but for him to go forward. Flyweight division is pretty much open. You know, um, to me, there's only a few guys that are in there that um, can give a shot at Brandon Moreno or Davidson Figueroa or whoever wins their fight next year. But um, Kai Carter Friends is one step close to getting a title shot, maybe even getting a title shot next year. Who knows? We'll see after the trilogy fight of next year. And then we had Jeff Neal versus Santiago Ponzinibbio. Um, Ponzinibbio, I believe he won his last fight before this fight. Um, Jeff Neal uh, lost his last fight. You know, um, I think that Jeff Neal had a really good performance. Uh, Santiago did, a, did pretty good himself, but just the inactivity for um, Ponzinibbio was a downfall for him. And... Um, you know, now he has to work to get, uh, get a fight in. You know, get get the train rolling all over again. And, um, yeah, for Jeff Neal, um, nothing right now for him just to keep going, moving forward. And, um, you know, I can't wait to see him fight. Hopefully he let go of his hands. Uh, in this fight with, with Santiago, he didn't really let go of his hands. Both guys didn't really do much of anything. You know, besides the towards the end, the second round or the third was the only time they started to open up little by little. And um, again, you know, can't wait to see what's next. And then we had the co main event. We had Amanda Nunes defending her title against Juliana Pena. And um, yeah, man, uh, Amanda Nunes was arguably known for being the GROAT in MMA, double champ status. She was like that for years. Um, Juliana Pena, her sheer will. And heart, 
And what she displayed in the Amanda Nunes fight, I thought was an amazing thing. Um, I feel like, you know, she opened a lot of people's eyes right now. Um, Amanda Nunes having fought, you know, in a while. You know, she had COVID. You know, she had a daughter with Nina. So I feel like there's a whole bunch of stuff going on the outside for her. And um, who knows if she had the real proper training. She didn't look like she did at all. Uh, she looked at, uh, exhausted. You know, the first round, it was an Amanda round. She did pretty good. But, uh, I mean, the second round started and it was it just went all hell. Broke loose from there. And um, she started a brawl. But then, like, Juliana's hands. To me, her hands was not really that great. But the accuracy that she displayed against Amanda. Because I feel like she tagged Amanda a lot more. Than Amanda did to her. I mean, Juliana's face was a mess as well. But um, just for Juliana standing there in front of her and just banging it out with her and not giving a shit, you know, if she gets caught, that's amazing. And then at the end of the, at the end of the day, Juliana, what she wanted to do, and I said it from time to time again, if she get it to the ground, that would be the one chance that she got to win the title, and she did that, and she sunk in the ring and control. What a phenomenal! Victory for Juliana Pena, and most likely her next fight will be Amanda Nunes. You know, the rematch, and I think that's that's well deserved. Amanda's been holding the division down for years. Um, I don't know what's gonna happen with the flyweight. I mean, not the flyweight, the featherweight division of the women's. I feel like they should just let it go. I mean, there's no real 145 pound girls fighting at that division, anyways. You know, Amanda went up to beat Chris Cyborg, so. I feel like they should just scratch it, you know. There's not a lot of women at 145 in the UFC, so they should just, in my opinion, just scratch that whole division in tow. And uh, yeah, man, that's what I think. And in the main event, we had Charles Oliveira versus Dustin Poirier, and um, and what an amazing fight that turned out to be. Dustin Poirier dropping um, Charles Oliveira. In the first round, you know, that that first round was bananas, man. Uh, they pushed the pace and they pushed it early. And, um, you know, I feel like the knees to, to the body that all Oliveira was doing to Dustin really did play a part. Even though, you know, if you ask these guys, they're not going to say, oh, that didn't hurt. But, yeah, it kind of did. Dustin already was breathing early, you know, throughout the fight. And then the second round starts and Oliveira doing his thing. Gets the fight to the ground. Lackluster, but still gets to the ground and... That's how that round went. You know, third round started. Dustin was already tired. Um, you know, Oliveira gets the fight again back to the ground. And, you know, I mean, not even that. He, he tapped him out standing up. What am I talking about? And, um, you know, he ended it there. Dustin was trying to defend it. He was defending it pretty well. But then he got caught with the Renegade control. And now for Charles Oliveira, great victory for him. Now there's nothing for him to move forward. I think Justin Gaethje... Is most likely gonna get the next title shot, and that's that's a fantastic fight. Um, I can't wait. You know, I'm not gonna break that fight down yet until it's official. But um, that's a great fight. I wouldn't mind seeing that. Uh, for Dustin Poirier, I don't feel like this is the end for him. Uh, he's just probably gonna take the rest of this year off, and maybe half of the next year, and uh, regroup and get back to the drawing board. There's nothing really much he can do. Um, he's a great fighter. Maybe the Conor McGregor fight there. But then Carlos calling out, calling, trying to call out Oliveira, which I think is bananas. Um, he definitely don't deserve that that type of shot. Like, like bro, get out of here. You know, you la you lost your last couple of fights. I don't even know why. He, it's, ah man, it's, I think it's bananas. And um, yeah, for Charles Oliveira, you know, if he can get past Dustin, uh, Justin Gaethje, excuse me, uh, in their fight, whenever they do fight, you know. You got Mike Ch well, Mike Chandler needs to win right now. Um, Islam Machak, I can't even say his name, Islam, um, right now. And there are a couple of guys in the top five I think he could fight, you know, if he can get past Justin Gaethje. Um, that would be an amazing fight. UFC 269 was an amazing card. Um, I love watching it. You know, I was live. Make sure to check out the live, man. It was, it was great. And, um... I want to appreciate you guys watching the channel. And the channel is growing little by little. Let's get to 200 subscribers. If you like the video, please hit a like and subscribe. I would appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.